lovely shadow under an arch. Remember, you as an artist can cut out all the traffic and the road signs. You can make the composition you want. And don't forget to look up. Skylines in cities and towns are fantastic. Look at all the old chimneys and the roof lines and the light catching the surfaces. Subtle tones, not such strong sunlight now. So you can just see different greys, different reds, just small differences. Going closer, remember you as an artist can crop any view you see. Out of all the potential subjects in this street, I've chosen this lovely rooftop, this house with rickety tile and all the sort of mortar lines are all crookedy. And I just, I just love the sort of character that it's got. That's my painting. I'm going to do a little acrylic sketch on canvas of that. Even though there's no strong contrast of light and dark in this painting, I'm still going to start by placing in the dark areas against the light so that I know what my actual tonal balance in the painting is. If the tones work, you know the painting's got a good chance of working. So half close your eyes if it helps you to see better. I'm just going to find the darkest areas, just give myself a clue as to where they are. Working on this lovely burnt in the background, has put in a mid-tone that's not dissimilar to the lovely brickwork. All this is darker than the sky, even though it's a white slab on top of that brickwork there, all darker than the sky. The main thing is just get the form of the building so it all holds together. And worry about detail later. It's another case of building up colour, like in watercolour. I'm using quite thin tints, so I'm using a bit light watercolour. Now some of this brickwork I'm going to leave now, just to get some of this lovely light burnt sienna colour saved. Oh, it's going to all cover up because it's so much darker. Okay. The whole of that white facade, half close your eyes on it, it may be white, but it's grey. It's dark against that white sky behind. So now's the time to bring across a wash over all that to make sure I don't get carried away thinking it's much lighter, which is easily done when you start to look at the particulars. I like the stark aerials. I love aerials. Lovely. Go to the sky put them in now, then I can bring the wash of the sky around them and it'll look a bit more effective than if I paint them on top of the wash. And now these windows have gone a gorgeous sort of yellow ochre colour, so the raw sienna I shall wash in over the... There's still See, if you half close your eyes and you compare them with the sky, they're still much darker than the sky, even though they're pale compared to the brickwork. And look at those lovely reflections of the trees in the window. I'm not going to worry about that horrid window box. Forget that. colour of the tiles. Now they are they oh, almost the same tone as the brickwork actually. Oh look, it's wonderful blue sky. That's what I like. Look at that lovely vibrant colour against the sienna background and against the siennas of the painting. Need a smaller brush to come in between the aerials. But obviously the sunshine is now going to change the relative tone so I'm not going to 
work on the building itself yet until I see if this is actual real sunshine that's come to stay or it may just be temporary. So I'm using it for my background but I won't start fiddling around on the foreground yet. Don't be afraid to leave bits of the underwash out from the main wash because that little bit, those little touches of warm colour add character to the painting. The light is now catching the tops of these window frame areas. Wonderful shadow of the aerial on here. Just got to get that. Oh, look at that. Now, because we've got our basic tone of our brickwork, we can now just bring the mortar lines in and build, start to build the front facade. We don't need to show every mortar line. They are so wonderful and rickety though, it's rather nice. Don't want that mortar line to be too light. They're not incredibly light against the brickwork just indicated the ones coming inside there. We can't really see them as it gets higher up because it gets darker. great to use a flat brush for this because you can just twist and turn it to suit the different lines and they all fall in different lines. The fun of architectural painting is once you've got the form is, is these little details, all these lovely things that happen, all the patterns, textures. It's these shapes and the more you, the more you paint them, the more you see them and the more enjoyment they give you. Now for those dark whites. Look at the wonderful reflections of the tree on the glass. It's a sort of a greeny, dark sort of greeny colour. when you're doing repetitive details, just check, just keep re-referring re, re with your eye because you might miss out on some nice little feature if you just assume you know what's going on. The beauty of acrylic is that you can put these lighter lines over your washes which you couldn't do in oil because it wouldn't be dry, and you couldn't do in watercolour without using white gouache. 